Hello Aries, welcome to your weekly intuitive reading. I hope that you are doing well. I'm going to jump right into the messages for sun, moon, or rising in the sign of Aries. As always, keep in mind these are general messages, so take what resonates for you. Leave the rest. Check with your other placements, your moon sign, your rising sign, any of the other zodiac that stand out to you. And if you are interested in having a personal one-on-one -on -one message reading with me, <laughs> you can book that through my website, which is bethechange333.com. All of that information is also in the description box below this video. Just click on the word more and it will all drop down for you. Okay, Aries, let's begin. Let me take a sip of water real quick. All right. What is the message for Aries, please? I have a lot of energy swirling around me right now. A lot of energies. Supportive, of course. My outer experiences are a reflection of my internal condition. Oh, yes. Yes. Very true. Hard to accept for many, but very true. Whatever we're experiencing outside of ourselves. Now, not everything, okay, but when they are repetitive and we get tested, we do get tested and challenged, that is brought to us, but how we are reacting and responding is what we're going to get. What you give is what you get. So whatever's going on in here, if it's not okay, it's not okay outside of you either. My outer experiences are a reflection of my internal condition. Okay. And if your internal condition is like, yay, this is exciting. I'm loving this. Or let's see, I love a challenge. Then your outer experiences are just that, enjoyable. What else do we have for Aries, please? Message for Aries. Okay, I feel like many of you are at a very important choice point in your life. So this guidance is really geared to, towards you to help you make that choice. What you are choosing is within your consciousness. Are you going to choose victim consciousness or co-creator consciousness? Meaning, I understand that my outer experiences are a reflection of my inner world, even subconscious. Even when we understand that, we can get in touch with that. It will change the perspective and make a course correction so that you understand you are creating with co co creating with the stream of energy, with source energy at all times. Engaging with source energy through everything that you do. Every person that you engage with, every person, place, thing, plant, animal, you name it. I might have to let my cat in. She's meowing at the door. Okay. 
Mm, bear with me. I'm sorry. I normally don't do this, Aries, but she will distract me in this reading. Yes, I know. She will distract me. I, we don't want distraction. So yes, this is an important choice point. Crossroads. I don't know, I don't know if we want to say crossroads. Choice point. That's a good one to say. When we're in victim consciousness, we tend to blame. We tend to be angry. And... Uh, we co-create more to blame and be angry about. I spent a good deal of my life in that energy. I think a lot of humans do. When we're in co-creator consciousness, every waking moment is, uh, is a gift. Especially when you're present. Present with life. And it feels way better too. <laughs> what else do we have for Aries? What's the message for Aries, please? I think you've had enough experiences to understand the duality of this, of ourselves. Victim consciousness or co-creator consciousness. We have emotional loss with the sacral chakra. Very interesting because um, Gemini just got this combination. So you may have Gemini in your chart. The sacral chakra, the second chakra, is a very important energy center in the body. It is in the sacral area. It is our the energy center of our very creation or co-creation. Uh, it is also our energy center of our sexuality, of intimacy, of forming intimate connections with others, with life, with source. Doesn't have to be sexual be just friends or allowing others to, to see th into you to be vulnerable and transparent it's not easy but it is easy it's not easy when you're holding in pain from the past especially emotional loss there could be, in your past, childhood wounds um, along the lines of um, not being supported emotionally, not being seen, heard, felt, maybe not getting your emotional needs met at all. Let's keep going. Or just having the loss, uh, some form of loss, a loss of a parent, or if the parent, if you didn't lose a parent, maybe that parent's attention went elsewhere. Take it as it resonates for you. Okay. Ooh. Okay. So we have incoming messages, incoming remembrances incoming understanding i understand crown chakra it's also linked to your dreams and um it's it is our the, our very ability to connect to spirit to source itself so, let me have stand your ground 
we'll see where this is going. But um, definitely don't give up on wherever source is taking you right now. Uh, we've got firm foundation at the bottom here. Before we can have a balanced sacral chakra, we have to have balance in the root chakra. I'm also being guided to look at this triangle at the base of his spine, which is our life force energy that lies dormant uh, until it is activated in the Kundalini rising through up all of the chakra centers. So you may be having a lot of energy moving through your body, a lot of um, sensations, and it can be very emotional. It can also be very enlightening and um, you can have uh, physical pains. Uh, look up Kundalini uh, awakening if you are not aware of what it, that is. But anyway, um, before the sacral chakra can become totally in, in balance and alignment, um, we have to be grounded, meaning we have to um, work on the root chakra, uh, feeling safe and secure in our own skin, in our own body, on this planet, as a sentient being. And once we have that grounded sensation, that, that firm foundation within ourselves, not looking outside of ourselves to find that sense of security, then the sacral chakra will start to align naturally. So let's see where this is going. Let's keep going. I know, Luna, you're going to have to wait. Sorry about my cat. She likes to be part of the reading sometimes. Tell me about emotional loss for Aries, please. Why is emotional loss out here? Again, you may resonate with the Gemini reading because that is exactly how it came out for Gemini. Why is emotional loss out here for Aries, please? Thank you. The moon. You're not comfortable with your emotions. You're not comfortable with the, the depth of the emotions that rise up through duality, through life. So you shut this part of yourself down a lot. But it doesn't go anywhere. It's always going to try to resurface. Usually with more intensity especially around full moon energy. Most likely because you did not have, again, the emotional support or the guidance through deep traumas, deep emotional experiences that you had as a young child that um, were not processed, were not supported and um, it formed a, a stronger aspect of yourself to, you know, continue to move on in, in life. Uh, but these deep emotions, they still stay within. And that can develop a, a fear, a fear of one's own emotional body and emotions. But guess what? That's how we choose victim consciousness over co-creator consciousness. Mm. One moment, Aries, I'm sorry. Okay, where were we? The moon, the moon with emotional loss. Yeah, see how she's drowning. She's drowning in her emotions. I think there's a fear here within you that if I open myself up to full transparency, 
to form true intimate connections, I could drown in all of these emotions. But other, the other may not fully understand. I don't even understand why I have these big, deep emotions. My outer experiences are a reflection of my internal condition. Use that as your mantra. When big emotions rise up, work through them. Let them flow through you so you get a better understanding of yourself and what actually drives you emotionally. Yeah, page of cups with the sacral. Because you have very... There's big love here for you, Aries, and connection. Okay. Ooh. Okay. And your energy system packs a powerful punch, King of Wands. We're going backwards here. King of Wands overall. That's a lot of passion. It's a lot of drive. That's a lot of will. It's a lot of determination. It can actually be a sense, a source of alter ego that's been developed to get, to bypass feeling these feelings. And you want to be mindful of this energy, Aries, um, because that's the energy of, I want things my way. I'm going to do them. And, you know, regardless of what effect it has on anybody or anything, I'm in charge. Strong will. Be mindful of what you do with that energy. It's powerful. But um, it can backfire on you. Back to... <laughs> Back to getting in touch with your emotions, your true, the depth of your emotions with the moon. To open you up to having true connection, true intimate connection. There's signs and synchronicities all around you. And they are speaking loudly to you. And you feel them. You resonate with them. They are calling you Aries calling to your heart you see the energy that's that's emanating out from his chest you're calling things in and then you might shut it down <laughs> like oh my gosh did I actually call this in my outer experiences are a reflection of my internal condition because we all need love we all need these deep connections and you pull them in so nicely because of this very powerful energy. But then you don't know what to do with them. Because it's like, oh my god, now I have to feel. Now I have to feel. Crown chakra. You're getting a lot of um, insight, awareness, and downloads. Cosmic downloads, even. So the universe is giving you some lessons. And you are learning. You are getting a better understanding of yourself. Self-knowledge is key here, all of your parts, because we want to be mindful. We want to understand how, what we create and how we actually create it, because we are creator beings, co-creator beings. This fell below, stand your ground. You know what you want. Don't give up. Don't give it up because of this fear, because of some emotional losses and things that the depths of your emotion. Spirit, the universe, puts people in our path that are aligned with that, are aligned with us, and are ready. Okay? Don't forget that. Let's get to one last message here from the Oracle of the Seven Energies.
you may also be intuitively picking up on all of this already. There's a, there's a deep inner knowing and you're just currently working through like I'm no longer a victim I, I I no longer resonate with feeling like a victim I I no longer place blame outside of myself for anything what other people do for, you know to themselves or project out that's on them it has nothing to do with me advice for Aries please The, the two polarities in life that, that create this vortex or this vacuum for us that we can really lose ourselves is desire and fear. And they are constantly the two poles that we're working with this push pull. We have the land in between. <laughs> oh, I love it. So you are really in between these phases here, Aries. Like I said, there's a choice for you to make. Victim consciousness or co-creator consciousness? Let's read this from the book for you. You're in a process of change. You no longer, like, like, <laughs> you know that you were called to it and can no longer be who you were, but you aren't sure what the next experience of your life will be. You are in between what was and what could be in a pupil stage, like during the metamorphosis of a caterpillar into the butterfly. However, you can't just skip the messy parts. You have to endure the unknown and uncomfortable as you reinvent yourself. The thing is, you're not quite there yet. You have one foot in the past, even if you're ready to shed that version of yourself and become something new. You must start redefining who you are in the context of your question. What do you believe is possible when you get to the next place? Can you explore this stage of your evolution to get to know yourself better? The process in between worlds is where things get really interesting. You learn how to manage your fear, how to stay present in the now, how to see in the dark. You absorb the lessons offered to you with grace because you can't go any faster. This is a real test of emotional fortitude, patience, trust, and humility. Once you have made this no man's land your home, it will be a part of you. Then whatever was set in motion comes to life. This is what you've been waiting for. When you look back, you will grow to love the place in between for that is where you were reborn. Oh, the chills. That is a beautiful way to end this message. So Aries, this is what I have for you this week. I hope that you found this to be helpful for you. And I'm sending you so much love. Take care. Bye.